Hi guys, uh, how's it going? Um, so today, uh, big topic, uh, how to get the job at Google and, and Google interviews. And so uh, I want to keep this as brief as possible. I know based on all the information that that's going to be relatively difficult, but uh, I'll try and keep it short and sweet and then provide a lot of information uh, in the bottom just to direct you to an overview of the content and then send you uh, towards a couple of good resources. So. Um, item number one, the big disclaimer is, yes, I did work at Google for just under five years, um, both in Mountain View and Sunnyvale, uh, two of the corporate headquarters for Google. Um, so I strongly encourage you to not watch videos um, that are provided by people and companies that are people who didn't work there. Right, the people who work there know how it actually works, and and I'm not trying to guide myself as the end all be all resource, um, but just be discerning, um, and that goes for all content. Right, as you're looking at content, don't look at one article, don't um, watch one video, look at a lot of stuff. Uh, you'll find some good feedback, and I think you'll be able to figure out what seems real and what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. Um, secondly. I do want to po point you to the right resources and the best resource, Google employees. Uh, Life at Google is a great place to go. I'm going to put that in the comments below so you don't have to pause and go look for it. Um, Life at Google is awesome. And then even if you go to google.com slash careers, there is great content just on that page. I mean, Google is really willing to provide the details to make sure you're successful. Um, they're great at that. They want you to have success. They have trouble finding the best candidates, even though they're Google. Uh, it takes a lot of work, so they want to set you up for success. Um, lastly, uh, I just want to kind of mention that this is a broad overview. So if you're looking for proprietary information, that I am going to release something that you probably haven't seen before. I mean, it's just not going to happen, right? It, it goes against my core beliefs. Um, Google treated me really well and, and I want to treat them right by not uh, releasing any proprietary information. So um, if this is a stopping point for you, I, I get it uh, if you were looking for a specific tip, but um, I'm going to talk about this from a more general perspective. Um, so myth busting, <laughs> let's kind of just chat about this for a second. Google does not ask trick questions anymore. Uh, it goes against their policies and a part of the process, I'll talk a little bit about this later in the video, is hiring committee. And hiring committee is essentially a group of peers in a similar space that didn't interview you that is determining whether you go on to the final stages of the process. They review questions and answers. So if interviewers are asking trick questions, they are going to get flagged and they are going to get feedback saying, hey, don't ask this question anymore. Google doesn't ask trick questions, but they do ask open-ended questions, which can be a little tricky. Again, we'll dive a little bit more into that, and I think, and I keep mentioning, that's probably another video, so I'll get to that as soon as possible. Um, there's a lot of information out there on the process, right? Um, so I want to go through that as well. Uh, so basically Google strongly believes in the law of diminishing returns and basically what that principle says is more interviews doesn't yield better results right after you interview a certain amount of times it's just not going to be beneficial so what I really want you to be thinking about is just don't worry about getting over interviewed typically you're going to start with a recruiter screen followed by that recruiter screen you will have either a phone interview or a video interview, it's much, much more likely to have a video interview. That's kind of the 95 to 99 percent. Typically, if it's a good video interview, Google will move you to the on-site process. Sometimes there's just not enough content there and they need to do a second video interview. If that goes well, you will move forward to the on-site process. That can be as few as a few interviews and lunch or as many as five interviews and lunch. It really depends on what the team needs. If it's a leadership role, uh, there might just be more interviews because they have to specifically test for your leadership skills, something else we'll talk about in this video. Uh, if that goes well, as I mentioned, hiring committee, a group of your uh, potential peers, reviewing all the information. Um, hiring committee, they are kind of a final decision maker in the sense that if they say yes, you'll move on to this very simplistic final executive review. Um, if they say no, 
the process will stop. And sometimes, again, just like in the beginning stages, they'll need more information. So you might need to do additional interviews. Typically, those are not done on site. Typically, those are also followed up via GVC, you know, the Google Hangouts. Uh, I just want to say the disclaimer of this process can change. Um, executive review, hiring committee, they might not be a part of the process for forever. They were a part of the process um, up until February of this year when I left Google. Um, so what else do I want to chat about? Okay, so let's get into really why you're probably listening to this. And, and I want to talk about the core basics of what Google's going to look for in any candidate. And this was something that I really developed over time because this is what I consistently saw from the groups I supported, which was technical program managers, software engineers, and support engineers. Those were the three core functions that I worked in with some leadership roles uh, sprinkled in. And so uh, the first and most key item is problem solving. So this is going to be a theme throughout the day. This is going to show up in every question that you answer. So behavioral interview questions, you've prepped those great examples. You're going to have those problem solving examples to bring to the table. But problem solving throughout the day is going to be really, really critical. Uh, the Life at Google uh, resource that I'm going to provide for you, Becky, she's an engineer at Google. Um, if you're not an engineer, go ahead to minute 21 when Becky starts talking about the tips for how to have success, but the problem solving is not just about finding different paths. It's about asking clarifying questions. It's about talking out loud about your thought process. It's really developing and building and building and building, and that's how you'll get to these answers that are a little trickier. Again, look at what Becky has to say. She's an engineer at Google, and I love all of her tips starting at minute 21 uh, of that particular video. Uh, the second core item absolutely is leadership. Uh, a lot of candidates are coming in interviewing for individual contributor roles. doesn't matter. Google is looking for leaders across the board. Leadership is a very, very broad word. But the way that this is going to show up the most is it's going to show up in your answers to those behavioral interview questions. So again, examples that demonstrate leadership, they're going to be really awesome for you. So be thinking on that concept. Third core item, demonstrate, demonstrating results <clears throat> with data. So backing up your examples with data, I supported one group. They were a pretty large hiring group at Google for my first few years, and, and this was a repeated theme. Hey, that person was good in the interview, but they didn't show any data. They didn't bring any data to the table. You have these specific results that you've had in your career. Bring that data to the table. It's going to be absolutely critical to success. Um, so dig in, dive in, and, and think about those specifics and bring them up during the interview. Um, fourth, this is kind of a tricky one, uh, and you might want to read up a little bit more on this space, but it's, it's navigating ambiguity. And so what does navigating ambiguity mean? Um, it means moving forward when you don't have all the information. Um, you're going to take on some uncertainty, some risk, and you just need to adapt and move forward. And that's something that is going to show up throughout the day in the interview. Uh, so it, it really is and does correlate really well with problem solving. But with these vague open-ended questions, how do you navigate and answer one of those questions when you have very little information, where you clarify, you ask follow-up questions. And so navigating ambiguity and problem solving, they'll be one and the same. If you can do that well during the interview, uh, you'll do great. Um, also, what I want to chat about is just kind of lastly is this flexibility, fungibility, adaptability. You'll hear me chat a lot about these items. Um, and during the interview, this is going to show up in a couple of of different ways. I mean, I think one of the ways it shows up is, is specifically when an interviewer asks you a follow-up question. If you are so certain about path A and the interviewer stops you and says, you know, hey Sue, what about path B? And gives you this option of path B and you're stubborn about knowing that path A is right, don't, don't do that. Flex a little bit and, and take the path 
of path B because the interviewer is curious to hear what you're saying about that. This is part of the flipping, switching, and, and moving on a dime and talking about something different. It will show your problem solving capabilities and it will show your ability to navigate ambiguity because you've had this path and it's been changed. Uh, the second kind of funny one that pops up, I talked about this in another video, is your interview, things are going to go wrong. You're going to have your room moved, an interviewer is not going to show up. Don't worry about it. Actually, just say, hey, I'm happy to be here. And showing that flexibility and adaptability at the moment, oh, it's going to be so critical to your success and it's just going to improve your likability a lot. Um, again, I will post those five core items in the comments below. Uh, just a few last pieces of advice. I know that this is again coming from a more general perspective, but again, this is where I saw great success at Google. Um, prepare. If you're not willing to prepare, you're probably not going to get the job. So prep on those great examples. Um, really work on your presentation skills. And lastly, practice. Sit down with somebody else you know, whether that's a family member, former colleague, current colleague, a friend. And the best part is you can do this via video. It's better to do it face to face, but I know that can be tough, especially if you're working, you have a family, you have other things. But a friend would be willing to hop on with you at 8 p.m. and say, hey, your eye contact's not working, or you tend to say, um, a lot. There's a lot of different items that your friends and the people that know you best will share with you if you're willing to take the time and, and go through that practice section uh, session. Um, the second item is a really, really big one. Open-ended, vague questions. Uh, Google is famous for these. Engineers, you might even get open-ended math questions. So just be really prepared on the open-ended questions. Do your research and figure out how you answer them. The best way, ask clarifying questions, ask follow-up questions. I can tell you in my Google interview, my analytical interview, um, I was asked a very open-ended question about enhancing a complex project. I took a half an hour to answer that question. And the only reason why we were able to go and have a half an hour is because there was a great back and forth. There were lots of follow-up questions in there. I asked lots of clarifying questions. I checked in a lot with the interviewer to make sure that my story was making sense. And that question went great because I was doing all the other core items. I was problem solving. I was navigating ambiguity and doing all those things. If the question seems really short and simple, it's not. That's, that is how Google doesn't ask you trick questions, but can trip up and trick candidates a little bit. If it seems really vague, dig in. They want you to problem solve. Um, the last piece is, is common sense. And I really... I want you guys to use this um, in the entire interview process. So as you're watching videos and you're prepping, just think, does this make sense? And if it does, it's probably good content. Same with the interview. Um, no rote question and answer. Treat it almost like you are already an employee. So if you're sitting in a meeting and a question comes to you in a meeting, you probably might not answer it right away. You might be thoughtful and take a second to answer, collect your thoughts, get organized. Uh, if you are working through something, you might ask for some feedback along the way. Does that make sense? Am I moving forward in the right path? Do the same thing in an interview. Be a normal person. I know that it's, it, it's so hard. You get into this mode where you're just, you're trying so hard to get the questions right, but think about just having a really honest and open dialogue with the interviewer. Typically, that goes really well. Um, a few last thoughts. Uh, most of the interviews at Google are going to be a mix of technical and behavioral. Uh, it's an engineering organization, so most of the interviewing is done at some level of engineering, so you're going to get that tech. Um, the behavioral piece, um, you know, for the behavioral piece, you just got to prep those examples. Um, how you dress. Talk to your recruiter about it. Google's a casual company. I mean, when Google announced that they were becoming Alphabet. Larry Page was wearing um, basically sports gear, t-shirt, shorts. Um, I was 30 feet away from him when he announced it. And so if Larry Page is making this huge announcement dressed that way, it, it's pretty safe to say you can dress casually. My best interview candidate at Google ever uh, rolled out of bed, walked in the interview, sweatpants, t-shirt, bedhead, and crushed it. And 
I also had somebody come in in a three-piece suit when I told them to dress casual and they didn't get the job. Google's a casual environment. Again, check with your recruiter, but don't worry about the clothes. Worry about prepping on all these other items. And then lastly, this is very engineering specific. Um, engineering interviews up until early this year, and you'll have to ask your recruiter, engineers, you have to code on a whiteboard. That's weird. You're used to coding on a computer. Get comfortable, practice coding by using a piece of paper and a pen, or if you have a whiteboard that you can use at your current office after hours or whatever it's gonna be, it's different. And it challenges your brain to work in a different way, and I think that this is part of the reason why Google likes it. I can't say that it's gonna be done that way forever, but that's the way it's been done for a long time. So it's a great exercise to go through that. Again, practice is, is really key. Um, I really hope this helps. Uh, you know, I saw a lot of content that was extremely misleading, which is the reason why I did this video that I, I never intended on doing. I, I didn't want to use the Google brand to, to build my presence. My goal is to help people looking for jobs or advice um, anywhere for any position. Uh, but with all the misleading stuff out there, again, I, I just felt like this, this type of video was going to be helpful. Um, Please look at the content below, the Life at Google, um, and a couple of the other links that I provide can be really helpful. If you think that this kind of information is, is helpful at all, uh, please subscribe. You won't get emails unless you click into them. So uh, really appreciate the time and, and good luck with your Google search. Take care. Bye.